Hello everybody. I'm going to wait till 7 o'clock and we'll get started here in a little bit. So I'm just going to wait a little bit and uh, until we get enough people together for this. Okay? All right. I see some people are good. There's some more coming. I'm just going to wait a couple minutes till we get to uh, to 7 o'clock. Hello, hello, everybody. Just hang in there. We're going to wait till 7 o'clock or a minute or two after. Just... Hello, Veronica. Hello, Verna. I'm waiting right till 7 o'clock or a minute after so people can get online. Hello, Brenda. And Lori, hello. And Susie, thank you for joining. Now, once we get started, I'll, I'll go over some of the, a um, little bit of the ground rules for this. Hello, Justin and Brenda and Susie from Oshawa, my Canadian friends up north and my family. <coughs> All righty, here we go. We got a couple of minutes yet. Hello, April. Oh, you're very welcome. Lori from Philly, thank you. Hello, Justin. I think your mom and dad are going to join us as well. I'm going to wait till around 7 and I'll get going here. All right. Hello, folks. Keep coming. That's all right. I'm going to start here in another minute or two. Hello everybody, welcome. We got around 20 people so far. That's a big class. I am recording from my home on the farm. Uh, I'm not in the shop. I decided to do it in the house. It's a little quieter and all that, so... Um, hello, Ruthie. We'll wait, wait just a little bit longer, another 30 seconds, and I'll get started. If you have your knives ready and sharpened and you have your piece cut out, uh, that's what we want, okay? So I'm going to go over some, some little bit of ground rules. These are for me. I can't, I can't watch the video and carve at the same time and answer your questions. What I'll do after we're done carving, I'll open it up for any questions you may have online for live. And um, I'll be happy to answer those questions for you after we're done carving. Um, I understand there's going to be some questions as we go. But since I can't hear you and I can't really reply to you other than reading what's on the screen, I really can't do that. So here we go. Ready, guys? Let's get your knives ready and we're going to get our... Our block. Now your block should have looked somewhat like this. Okay. Now I put some lines on here and I'll explain that in just a minute here. All right. So what we're going to do is this is a smaller version. The, 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 um, the one from The one that I told you to cut up was three inches by one and a half by one and a half. It's a little smaller than my original four. The reason for that, it will go a little quicker, and but this, but this part, the bottom part is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so let's get started with uh, with where the markings need to go. Um, one of my students did one of my classes and decided to put a um, 
a Santa on the end of a pencil. It is so teeny tiny small. I don't know how she did it, but Ruthie, thank you. That was wonderful. But anyway, I want to thank all those folks across country and also in Canada that are joining us and some in Europe that are joining us. I appreciate you doing that today um, and make this a fun time. We're not going to talk about politics, world events, or anything. We're just going to carve today. Okay, folks? So here we go. The first thing you want to do is you want to put a center line down the middle. Okay? Down the middle here. So you want to find where your line is, and you're going to put a, a center line all the way down to the bottom and also to the top all the way around. Then you're going to put another center line on the other side. Now, if you miss anything in this, it will be up on... Facebook later on it will be on YouTube for you to follow so if you don't get all of it today that's fine don't worry about it all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, now we have a center line now that's important because when you start rounding it you want to go you want to round it to that corn to that line those are guidelines of where the center is at the bottom where the center is at the top and um, the other thing we're going to do, where you cut this, this, this flat plane here, when you cut it up, what we want to do is we want to just uh, make a line, make a little, where it's cut right here, you want to go about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch down, right past that corner. You're going to mark each corner, Okay. I kind of did this ahead so I because it's hard for me to do this while the camera's in my face, but <laughs> it's okay. All right, let me get a drink of water here for a second. All right, so get your knives ready. All right, make sure you have your thumb guards on or your glove. I'm going to just make this one statement. You do this at your own risk, okay? Uh, you know, be careful. If you have not used a knife before, I do not recommend you doing this without some other instruction before you do this project. All right, so I don't have a glove on. It's just easier for me to teach without it. But please put a glove on and put your thumb guard on. I have it on both so I can push my knife in. I use a lot of pocket knives. I don't recommend that for beginners, but I'm going to do it for... This this is the type of knife I would recommend for you folks that are beginners. is a is a Murphy knife. It's about an inch and a quarter long, and it's a perfect knife for beginners. So in fact, one when I start with the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to notch out each corner at the top, just like so. Okay. This is basswood. If you're wondering, this is basswood. If you're just watching and you're not carving, that's fine. Uh, hello, Jenny and Jack and my family and and Heather and all of you guys up north. I know the border is closed, so I can't really see you guys. But uh, thank God we have uh, Facebook and we've got uh, email and a telephone to stay in touch. So, okay. So each corner we're going to notch out a part. Okay, we're going to do all four corners. And you're not going to go in too far. And see how I'm pushing with my thumb? I use a pivot motion. That's what you want to do is use a pivot motion. Hello, Jack. Oh, by the way, uh, some of the cheesecake is already gone to let you guys know. <laughs> I had to, I had to uh, use it with everything going on. All right, so these are the four corners that you're going to have to start with. Now, what I'm going to do from here is this center line that we have, we're going to make this small curvature. Okay? So, we're going to just do like an upside down V. Okay? With a little bit of a, a turn to it. Each corner that way. Now, when we cut this, it doesn't go all the way to the top. It comes down about a quarter of an inch down, and then you're going to just make a little bit of a curvature to that cut that you just did. All right, so we'll do all four like that. Okay, so those are the top part, okay, that we're looking at. 
If you have a V tool, I kind of forgot this. If you have a V tool, it will come in very handy to do some of the work on the top of the pine cone. This is my design. I did this a long time ago, and this is one of the first classes that I teach at my at my studio, the camper studio here at the farm. And obviously, uh, we're not going to do that for a while. But anyway, the first thing I want you to do is do a stop cut. So we're going to go this way up and then this way and we're going to take the tip of your knife and you're going to just cut that out just like so now you want that pretty deep not super deep but you want it deep enough that you can i need another knife i'm sorry i sharpened about six of them so i wouldn't have to sharpen anything let me use this one this is the one most beginners use anyway all right the murphy knife all right, so we're going to just do each corner this way. All right, one. And this is called a stop cut, where you're cutting the line, and then you're taking your knife and cutting up to it. That's called a stop cut. Now, you notice I do a lot with my thumbs. I'm not pushing like this with my arm. Everything's pivoted and used with my uh, thumbs. Even pushing this, the knife, I'm not pushing the knife other than with the, my thumb. Okay, that's why I have this wrap, because if I do it a lot in one day, <laughs> it can be a little sore. So I'm going to make that a little deeper right there in the corner. All right. All right. And then you're going to do this one as well. You're gonna do, we're going to do all four. I'm going to try to do as much of this in the next two hours. You can come and go as you please. If you want to come back and look at how far we got, that's fine. Uh, I'll be here. And then we're going to come back on Monday, and Monday night at 7 o'clock as well. And we're going to hurry up and paint this thing. We won't do it today. Actually, there's going to be no uh, piece. We're just going to do the carving by the knife and clean it up with the knife. No, no sanding. Let me bring this back here for a second. All right. Let me get another knife because I'm not happy with that. Okay. There, I'm happy with that one. There you go. Okay, so all four should look like this, all right, when you get it done. Now we're going to round this off. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to round this off. What I do is the top part first, and I do like a peeling of potato, and then I go up underneath a little bit, and then I cut it a little bit, a little deep, deeper. You want it hanging out over like you see here. If you get really good, we'll do a face later. Okay, uh, but we're not doing the face today. We're just going to do the, uh, the the simple form of the pine cone. All right, so there we go. Now, hopefully, if this mess in the world goes away by fall, I will have some fall classes later on. Um, they are usually my most popular time for people to take classes here at the farm. Um, so we're going to do all four corners like this, okay? All four. And we'll worry about rounding this off a little bit later. I'll show, show that to you. Now, I want to show you a mixture that I, that I use. It's a mixture of rubbing alcohol, and I know that's really hard to get right now, and 50% rubbing alcohol, well, 70% rubbing alcohol and water, and in the it's 50-50. 50 of the rubbing alcohol and 50 of the um, the water. All right, so we're going to do each corner. Uh, what what that does? It softens up the wood. You don't want to over spray it too much because it can check or crack on you when it dries. But I would say out of a hundred pieces, I do. I Maybe have two or three that will do that. But if you do it lightly like I just did, and not so much on the end 
uh, it's okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. We'll be here for a little while. I hope I'm not going too fast for you folks. Usually if I have a class, I'll do a section. I'll wait for you to catch up. So usually I have two pine cones going when you're doing one, and that's okay. I'm not doing that to show off. It just um, helps utilize my time as well, unless you need help in how to carve or how to hold your knife and stuff. Uh, sharpening. One thing you want to do with sharpening, you want to make sure that your, your how, what was the word I'm looking for? If you're sharpening, you can use a straw, or you can uh, you should use it every 20 to 30 minutes. I have enough knives here I can switch out, so I don't have to stop to do that. And what we don't finish here, you'll be able to finish offline. Because once we get this all situated, you will see definitely... Uh, this is repetitive down here when we do these uh, scales on it. I don't know what they really call them, but um, anyway. I miss seeing a lot of you at the Lancaster show this year. Uh, they canceled it, as many things have been canceled down here. And um, so what you want to do is you don't want to go all the way to the middle you want to get very close to it but you don't you want to make sure that it's it's still going to be square but it's still going to be look rounded all right this thing will always look square see but it will look rounded see okay and what you want to do once you get to a point where you're all the way across as far as you want you want to take all this rough stuff off the reason for that is when you go to paint it if it's rough it's going to get really really dark and you'll be able to see it it's like somebody who sands something sands a piece of um, wood and some of it's rough and some of it's really smooth the rougher spots are going to soak up the the paint a lot faster okay so, uh, we're 14 minutes into it. Not bad. All right. So, I will try to get this on, on uh, this video. On YouTube, like, a bit of to go on this, on this platform together. But, uh... Um, Okay, so now you want to make sure you take all that rough stuff off. Now you want to go in the direction of the of the grain. I had to think there for a minute. <laughs> I had to say it. Okay, so we're just going to do this. Okay, now I'm going to start rounding off the bottom. All and this here, you're going to have to cut that rough stuff off at the bottom. Make sure it's smooth, and then I'm just going to round the bottoms off. I like pushing the knife away from me than to me. That is much more comfortable to me. And people say, "Well, how do you get used to that?" Well, it's like driving a car. Do you think when you turn the signal on that you go, you stop and say, "Oh, I have to turn the signal on"? No, it comes automatically. So. When you turn right or left, you don't think about turning the signal on. You don't think, oh, I've got to move my hand to the signal and, and turn the, you know, turn the bar there a little bit. So uh, it's the same, it's the same concept. All right. I was trying something with the lighting in this dining room where I'm actually doing this. At mom's place in the dining room, so. Um. Let's see if I can get that all. And that's kind of what you want. Now, you can make this skinnier if you want, more rounded at the bottom if you want. So, 
The beauty of carving these, let me just show you something. You can make them any size. You can make them taller, you can make them longer, shorter, stubbier, as long as it's square, whether it's a one and a half inch or one and three quarters or one inch, as long as this part is square here, okay, looking at it uh, and looking at the top, you can make it any length you want. And you can make this any length you want as well. See, this one's a little bit longer. This one's a little shorter. And they all come out a little different. Some people have a real tight pattern when they do it. And some people don't. When I do smaller ones, it gets even a little tighter. And I will tell you, in all honesty, doing the small ones almost take as long as the larger ones. Uh, this one here, I did a face and one this size that turned out pretty good. And I think I sold both of them at Christmas time. So, um... I am starting to get into some other things lately. I haven't done a lot of carving uh, since my mom passed. I've been just busy with other stuff here. But um, this is actually uh, the second project I've done since she's passed. Um, I did an eagle with a friend of mine who wanted to make an eagle. Um, and we did that here at the, at the shop before all this uh, crazy stuff was going on. But uh, we're under an order here in Pennsylvania to stay home in our county. And it's not a statewide, but it's a county uh, order for, you know, food and stuff like that. So other than that, they don't. Or if you want to exercise, you can go to a park locally and walk. There were a lot of people walking the other day. All right. So. I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. I'm getting all the rust spots off. All right. All right. So the next class will be this coming Monday, and I'll put it on my Facebook page. And we'll paint it. And I'll tell you what paints you'll need to have. And we'll go over how to antique and all that. So and this procedure of antiquing works for all the same with all my carvings. All right. So there's a little line there. Yep. All right. So when we're done with this portion of it, and I'm still rounding it off a little bit because I don't like it too square. And I like to go under that. I'll be fussing here a little bit. That's awesome, Jack. <laughs> I wonder if Ann's watching. I don't know uh, if Ann's kids are watching at this point. All right. So that's our, that's our basic shape, all right, that we have right here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get this little knob at the top. That's technically like the branch part that comes out. And that's where the hook will go, all right? That's where the hook will go. So the first thing I do to do this, because we've got to get rid of all this rough stuff as well, we're going to just round a little bit off of the corners. Each corner gets rounded off a little bit. And here's the other thing I forgot to do. Where's my pencil? This has like an overlay a little bit like this 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 part goes underneath this part. So this there's a little bit of a of a carved out piece right here so they lap over so we're going to just do one side and the other in the direction of how it's going okay see that so it's a little bit curved a little bit of a curve all right Hello, Jen. I'm 
saying hello to my family. Don't dis disregard everything. All right, so <clears throat> we've got that done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, clean this up, and I'm going to just round this and get all this all the way to the edge. You want to get all that rough stuff, and you're going to just round that off, take off those corners. You see that corner there? You're going to take that right off. See how we rounded that? Okay, so we're going to do that next. And then what to do there? You don't want it to be looking like a, a ski slope this way. You want it kind of drooping down. Some people will do it that way. It's up to you if you want it to look more like a ski, ski slope. Um, everybody does it different. I am not sick. I've been hacking for weeks. So, let's see here. All right. So the next, how do we get this? Well, you see, we put a, we put a line across at the top. Which is like so. And you want to go about a quarter maybe an eighth of an inch down and you just want to start scooping out that's the easiest way to do it I do it with a V tool but you can do it just with a knife and just keep going around until you get that little knob stick out See how that's coming? Okay. I like it a little smaller, so I'm going to just keep going here. If you guys enjoy doing this, I will do another class in a couple weeks. If we're still stuck at home and we're not going out anywhere, I think it's a nice way to keep us busy. All right, so I'm going to now I'm going to round the top off to meet that, just to round off a little bit. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just slightly cut a tiny bit off at the top, so just a sliver. Get rid of those. Because if you have a lot of markings with your pencil, that is hard to hide when you go to paint it. So you want to try to clean up as much as you can as you go. Now, you notice I have a little marking here. Okay, so I'm going to just cut, and I'm going to undercut. See, just undercut a little bit, so it looks like it's laying over top of that. All right, same thing with, we're going to go this way, we're going to go undercut from the other side there, there we go. And sometimes you'll have to go back, I just took that one out. <laughs> Hang on just a second, I'll be right back. Okay. All right. And then the same thing over here. We're going to just cut it and we're going to just have it go underneath a little bit. All right. Okay. So they look like they're layered. I'll, I'll fix this up a little bit. Get rid of that knife. All right. So we're going to go in a little deeper in the middle. Make that stick out a little bit further. All right. All 
All right. All right, so we got the top done. Now, the hard part, if you have a V-tool, which I have a V-tool, this is a 4.5 milliliter or middle, I don't know, MM. You Canadians know what that is. Um, it's four, four and a half, four and a half by, hang on just a second, four and a half wide. It's a regular V-tool. Okay, sorry there. Um, I'm back. Um, what's happened here, here is uh, you're going to take your V tool. And you're going to go up through the center, a little bit of a curvature, like so. And then you're going to go and make your little lines going towards the center of that middle line that you put on. You're not going to take it all the way up. That's all that you're going to do to it. Okay. And then the same thing over here. You're going to just take your little V tool and you're going to just go up, kind of curvature, make a little bit of curvature with it. There you go. Does it have to be perfect? No, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, those are supposed to be like the pine needles at the top. Okay. And let's see here. So we're going to do each one. You can curve it one way or the other. It doesn't make any difference. And what, how I often use a V tool is I choke up on, on it quite heavily, okay? And then I place this on my piece as I carve. And I actually just end up... Yeah, you know, I'm not pushing with my arm or my hand. It's just my, my these four fingers are are pushing it along. Okay. After we do this, the top will be finished. Now you can go back and make more lines if you missed. You know, some people space them out a little bit different. That's totally up to you. Well, it looks like we got 40 people in the class. That's the, about the largest I've ever had at one time. I'll try not to be nervous here. I'm not nervous. Anyway. And same thing over here. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this. Okay. I'm trying to keep it where you can see it. Now, if I had more time, of course, I would take a lot more precision with it. But we're kind of in a time crunch here, and I want to get as much of this done before we leave at 9 o'clock. And I think we will by far. Um, I will take some questions after we're done because I can't read the uh, I can't read the messages as I'm carving at the same time, so I, I'll do it later. Uh, we'll have a question and answer at the end. Okay, so now what do you do? How do you get? We're done with the top. Okay, this is really what it looks like. I'm going to round this off a little bit more and get those bumps off. You can go back later and take care of that. Now we're going to do the bottom part. That's a very interesting thing, and I, I'll tell you what happened. The first, I don't know why it does it, but you see the curvature of this fine cone tends to go to the right. All of mine tend to go to the right, and that's actually how pine cones look. If you look at it, they spiral a little bit. They are not straight down. So what we're gonna, I'm going to show you, it's just four easy steps on each row is identically the same. And some people get it to go straight down. Mine ends up spiral going to the right. And, you know, it's a hit or miss. I don't always understand why. I can give you my theory on it, but let's show you how this works. So you take your pencil, take your piece. The first one you're 
cut is this one right here in the center. Okay, one there. And you can put one in. It's a little U, like an upside down C or a little bit of a U shape. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife, whichever is your sharpest, pointiest knife. You're going to take your, and you're going to cut it just like so on line. Turn it right side up, and you're going to slowly cut that piece out so it's going to layer. And you don't want to push, you don't want to snap it out because you don't want any of this part this edge right here, it's, uh, you know, chipping out. So, okay, that's the first one. All right, we're gonna go to the next one, and then once I start the first two rows, you'll you'll get the hang of it. There's a trick to it, and I will show that to you. Guys having fun? <laughs> I hope so. How cool is it that we can all be in the same class together? That is quite something. Where technology has taken us. Okay, now. Now we've got two. We got one there and one there. Now we're going to do the third one. Once you get going on this, it doesn't take too long to start. I can usually do one of these in an hour and a half really quickly. And I don't mark them all. I'm marking it now, so I'll show you how this works. And I'm going to get a piece of paper, and to really explain it on the paper, it would make it much more easier for you to understand. So, okay. So now we got those four done, okay? I'm going to show you on a piece of paper how this works. Fine. And, then, and what's the most important part? Okay, so here's your pine cone. All right. And here's your centerpiece, right? And this is your side underneath. Okay. So this is the first one. The second one, you don't want to go to the center to center off center so you're, you're going to do like one third of the way and you're going to do that one and this one you're never going to go to the center of the next one all right so let me show you how that works here so with this one is actually going to meet this one over here i know it's a bit long but it's okay so we're not going to go all the way to the center. Here's the center. We're not going to the center. We're going off about halfway between the center, so maybe a fourth. And we're going to just bring this like so, okay? And then we're going to do each one that way. We're not going to do it in the center. We're just going to do it off to the side here. All right. All right, and same thing there. You never take it to the center. You only take it off center, all right? So we're gonna go back to our knife, and we're gonna go, we're just going to put one together here, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna chop that out. Uh, I've taught a smaller version of this called the mini pine cone on line on my on YouTube. This is a larger version. Okay, same idea. Okay, see we're off center. We're gonna do the next one. I usually turn it upside down when I cut it. And then I always hold my thumb on my piece as I do it. All right. I'm gonna cut all four right away. For the last three, that's usually how I do it. I don't go, 
I don't flip it back and forth all the time. All right. Okay. And those are four. You're only going to do four per row. All right. Some people in class, they end up adding another one. And it will mess it up if you add another one. But it's always, you can always correct it. it. May not look exactly the same as you wanted, but you can always correct it. Okay? See how much control I have with my knife, with my thumb pushing the blade and not pushing the blade with this hand? You know, this hand just holds the blade in place. This one pushes it. Okay? There you go. Now, we do the second row exactly the same way. So there's only four, four going around. So again, we're not center. We're going corner. Now you can make this loop as big as you want or as small as you want. You can make it a tighter loop or you can make it a bigger loop. For instance, this is a tighter loop. This is a bigger loop. It's up to you. Usually when you get into smaller stuff, it will be a smaller tighter loop so I put all four again one two three four and you can only mark these as you go if you do you're gonna lose some of it if you don't go further again I did not go all the way to the center I did it off center okay see that yep, each one so we're gonna do the second row or the third row one Two, three, and four, and I'm pushing in pretty, pretty good. You know, I'm not, I'm not just, you know, when you do this, you can go as deep as you want. But that's, this is how deep I'm doing it right now. And if it's a little up, always go back and recut it. All right. All right. And this is the same four one that you do. And, that, and then the next row you do the same thing. A little monotonous, but you'll get the hang of it. And, uh, you know, it's important to just practice. Now, if you don't want lines, if you're using a, because it's not easy to get rid of these lines once you have them on, unless you cut them off or use an eraser, I would not use an eraser. Okay, that is one thing I would not... I see you, Nancy. I know you're watching me. Anyway, um, what I would do is when, let's do the next row. We're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to go render here. So we're going to go, mine's going to be a little tighter. Yours might be a little, well, I'm sorry. I didn't do that one yet. Getting ahead of myself here. Well, one to spend the evening really all right now we're going to do the next one i'm going to make that a little bit let me just take this off a little bit. you know if i make a mistake you guys will see it for sure i just want to make that loop a little bit bigger so we go a little bit faster here what time is it here Not, only 40 minutes not bad at all. All right, so I'm going to remember it's not to the center. Remember it's not to the center. It's off the center. I do it better if I have this on. I'll show you how to not get those pencil marks in there. Okay, best way to do it is do it above the pencil mark. When you do your cut, just do it this way, a little bit over over the top of it. So you cut the pencil mark off. Now see, when that doesn't come out clean, you want to use your knife. You don't want to pull it out. You don't want to pry it out. You just want to make sure you cut it out. Okay? Try not to do scraping with your knife. If you do, 
you'll end up uh, dulling your knife. I didn't bring in my machine to sharpen anything or to show people how to sharpen. That will come another day. All right. I'm going to keep going here. Actually, if you have a question for me, I can probably keep an eye on this and try to answer them for you if you have one. You just go ahead and put it in the comment, comment section. I'll take a look at it and uh, see if I can answer it for you. I'll use your name so you know it's your question being answered. And this is all you do. You repeat this all the way down and that finishes your pine cone. This is a nice like no-brainer kind of you don't have to think a lot when you carve one of these once you get used to it. You can kind of just sit with some friends or whatever outside and do this out on the porch. It's really really a, a nice um, pastime where you're not doing a face or worried about if it's going to be correct or not because you notice each one is different. They're different sizes. It doesn't matter. So, um, all right. So, let me see here. Okay. And again, I'm going to cut that out to make that work better. Um, Hang on just a second here. Okay, let me go back. All right. So now I'm not going to use anything but my knife. I'm not going to draw it on. It just slows me down. And I want to get this done before 9 o'clock. So... I'm going to go ahead and start doing it, but again, don't forget, you're going to do it not in the center, because this is what it would look like if you did it in the center. Let me show you real quick. If we do it like this, and hang on, this is how we're doing it right now, okay? If you do it from center to center, it will look like a shingle. That's what it will look like, okay? Okay. We don't want it to look like this. We want it to look like this over here. So, all right. So, I'm going to speed it up a little bit because we're on a time crunch. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask at this point. I'll keep an eye on the on the uh, on the phone. And you can see how deep I do it. It's already. I use a little bit of that rubbing alcohol and water to soften things up. It makes things go a lot quicker and a lot easier to cut through. And um, it works great. I'm going to spray it a bit back here. All right, you can see it's a little bit on the wet side right now and that's okay and I already did my cut with the knife because I use my knife as my pen kind of and it's all ready to go and the reason I did a shorter version is so that I could get with a two hour time limit and you don't have to do it this quick I'm just trying to show you the whole thing so you have something to go by but usually when we're in our class you know we talk and we chat for a bit, and uh, as we're doing it, most people by this point, uh, you know, are pretty comfortable with doing these cuts. Okay. I have another one done for Christmas. LOL.
Now when we get to the bottom, there's a little bit of a tr trick with that. Um, it will not come out as even as what you think. And uh, that's something I'll explain to you when, we, when I get down there. I hope that this time slot worked out for most of you. I don't know if it did or did not. I know some of you work and some of you are retired and some of you, you know, I was getting all different types of things going and I figured you could always watch this later if you want. Thank you, T. Wade. I appreciate that. Hope to get this one on uh, YouTube as well. Again, I go, I don't go to the center. It's off center. This is a bit on the boring side, I understand that, but um, this is just the way it's. Usually if I did a video, I would cut out about 15, 20 minutes and then come back, but I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. If you want to watch it, that's fine. I think we have some Canadians on here. Hello, neighbors. Friends and family. I hope they're all doing well up there. They actually shut the border so none of my family can come down and I can't go there. So that's really different. I don't think that's ever happened in my lifetime. A lot of things haven't happened in our lifetime in the last several weeks. So. I would say another 10, 20 minutes I should have this thing done. And it will be up on Facebook. Here's another thing I want to ask you folks, and you can give me some feedback if you would, either by uh, sending me a message or just commenting. I'm thinking of doing an individual classes with people um, if they're interested in such with Zoom. With the a lot of people are talking about the Zoom app. I, my sister and I tried it the other day, and it works really, really well. And um, and I didn't know if some of you might be interested in taking a private class uh, that way. Um, the, it would be very minimal uh, amount of money for that if you decide to do it. Uh, I would have time slots open. I'm, I'm working on that right now since the classes are going to be held off for a while. And some people like the individual uh, classes that I can see what you're working on. You'll see what I'm working on with Zoom because you'll be able to see each other. Um, so that is something I'm thinking of doing. So, well, you keep doing this pattern all the way down. You can give me some, uh, some feedback on that. I would appreciate that if some, that that's something you're interested in doing. Um, want to see what you're working on, how far you're getting. Uh, Zoom is an app that you get on the Google Play. You put it on your phone. And it, it actually is like FaceTime, but it actually lets you do group settings. And, um, and you'd be able to see what I'm working on, and then you would direct your camera on what you're working on, like what we're doing here. And then I would be able to instruct you from there. Hi, Lori. Hello, everybody. A lot of uh, locals are coming in from Honeybrook, I see, and from Elverson. But uh, we're getting there. I didn't expect this many people to show up. I expected about 40 people to show up, which is exactly what's happened. Um, thank you for doing so. All right. 
I'm going to spray this again with the solution just to make it a little bit softer for my knife to get through it. But um, like I said, if you're interested in that, um, let me know and I'll send you all the information, links and all that. I haven't worked on that yet. Um, you know, between everything else right now, um, this took me a while to get this thing set up for today. Um, I'll check in that if that can be done. I think you can go on a bigger computer with that. Um, my only thing is the camera on a computer may not be as as depth as uh, as clear as your phone. But I'm going to find that out. That's a good question. I'll let you know. Hi, Laura. So, um, so that's something I'm seriously thinking of doing. I've wanted to do that for a while. Skype was too slow. Um, I now have internet in my house, except doing it through the phone all the time. And I definitely will keep that. It's just been much easier. And all the neat programs I can get online um, with my smart TV that I bought at Christmas. It was so cheap, it was ridiculous. But um, it's just so nice to have it. I'm not sure, but I have to figure that out and see if I can. Uh, so, um, and my sister has some meetings up in Canada. I'll ask her if she's using her phone or she's using the, uh, the other. Uh, I'll find out for you. Hey, you're welcome, Kathy. Thanks for joining us today. But I'll make more of more of that available later about Zoom. I, I still have to figure out exactly because my sister and I connected with it, and it was okay. It took a little bit to connect, and I'm not sure if we were doing something wrong or what. But, but I think once it's like anything else, once you get used to it, I think it'll be very easy to use. Okay, we're getting near the bottom here. I'm going to keep going. It gets a little tougher when you get to the bottom, and I'll tell you why that is. Um, because you're going to end up going against the grain. So it's really, really important that your, your knife is super, super sharp. If not, you're going to have a real problem doing it. Um, so sharp, a lot of times I can go against the grain. And I haven't sharpened this one yet. I have a couple other ones here because I didn't want to spend time... I wanted to spend time with you folks showing you how this is done rather than sharpening anything right now. Thank you, Greg. Hello, Don. Okay. And it's the same for that you do all the way around. And notice it's going off to the right. <laughs> I don't understand how that does it, but it does it. It cracks me up. It really does. Anyway. Now, as it gets a little smaller down here, you want to make these little loops a little bit smaller. Okay? You don't want to go all the way. Um... Yes, Mule, this will be on on Facebook and the same same page you're on now. It will be on there. And then also it will be on uh, YouTube eventually. And I'll let you know. If you can't find it on Facebook, I'll have it ready for you. <coughs> I 
Thank you, Pam. No, I'm not sick. Everybody keeps asking that. No, I'm not. Okay. Let's see. So now I'm going to kind of start doing these individually because they're going to be a little bit different as we get down to the bottom. And I'm going to do one. And I'm going to keep rotating it. You notice I'm using the point of my, see how I'm going against the grain? That is uh, the hard part with that. All right. Let me just clean this up a little bit because that didn't work out like I thought. There we go. Now. Hey, guys, would you do me a favor? If you get one done on Monday and you get it painted, send me a photo of it. I'd love to see who got what done and where you're from. That would be awesome. If you could do me that favor, I would really appreciate that. Now, eventually you're going to start overlapping a little bit, but again, you do not want to go to the center. All right, so here it's starting to overlap a little bit. So I'm just going to go from, instead of from here to here, I'm going to go from here to over here. So you'll see. And you just keep going until you get to the very end, until everything meets. Now, you take a look at it. See, I have this pretty well done on this side. So we're going to go start on this side a little bit. You're welcome, Mule. You're welcome. Any way I can help you guys carve, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now, as I'm getting to the bottom here, okay, see how we have this? It's starting to go around the corner. Again, I'm going to make a smaller one. Sometimes you have to make a bigger one, but don't worry about that. It's, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Now, this is the hard part because I'm going against the grain. All right, that's the hard part. Now, see here, I'm going to clean that out a little bit. That works out just fine. Oh, that didn't come out yet. Let's get rid of that. All right. I'm just going to match things together. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's going to be off kilter now because uh, we're we're just not doing. It's there's not enough room. So I just keep going, and I just do a few others until I get one at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to try to. Just have another one there. And one more here. Okay. And this is kind of my center right here. So what I'm going to do is just cut that out a little bit deeper. Between these three. And that's it. There's your pine cone. Hi, Jean. How you doing? Nice to see you. I see you're doing a lot of videos. I haven't done any for a while. I've been kind of busy. But um, anyway, thanks for joining me today. All right, so that's our pine cone. And how, what time is it? Wow, it's only an hour. That's not bad. Let me explain. Any questions, go ahead and ask, because I can read the screen now a little bit better. Um, oh, you're welcome, April. Thank you for joining. Um, you're welcome, Ruthie. You're going to need a brown and burnt sienna mixed together. And I'll tell you, it's going to be like a wash, because if you look at it, it's not. You can still see the grain in the wood. You're welcome, Susie. And... Um, what you want to do is you need like a um, 
like Christmas green or more of a teal color, um, Christmas tree color um, green, and then white. That's the only three colors that you need. Um, if you're gonna gonna mix, um, this is bird sienna by itself. So if I had the whole thing like that, it wouldn't look right. Um, I did this different later on with the beard and stuff, but uh, you want to mix a little bit of the red burnt sienna and burnt umber together. It's going to be acrylic. Now, I know a lot of you can't get to the stores, and I wouldn't suggest you go, but if you any brown would work. But if you have a burnt sienna and the brown mixed together, it would be better. Um, sure. I don't know if I... Hang on just a second. Let me see if I got them overlapped a little bit better. Right there. See it? That's where it overlaps. Do you see that, bud? Okay. And that's how you overlap it. So you have this going this way. There's the other overlap. It's not far. It's not really deep. But, uh, you know, you can... You can see some of the overlapping. I don't know if I have that. There's there's a better picture of it. All right. And that one's going the opposite direction. All right. So you're welcome. You're welcome, Tony and Eva. Um, any questions, folks? We're already pretty well done with this until... Um, you want to make a couple more of these before we actually paint them on Monday night. I don't think it will take us more than an hour, not even an hour to paint these. But I will show you how to do the antiquing. Um, well, Justin, there is one um, that I recommend is the, is the Murphy knife. Now, I'm having a hard time finding these now. The supplier that I had uh, said he's not getting these anymore because the blade is not the same quality. I'm looking around for more now. Uh, but the Murphy knife is good for detail work and for a lot of rough outs. So this is a very good knife to start with. Thanks for your question. They run somewhere around 20 well, between 18 and $24 if I get them. All right, so painting these will be fairly simple to do. Uh, usually I would have a bunch of these ready to go. Um, uh, having a V-tool on the top is very handy. You can do it with a knife if you want, but it's a little different. I'll show you some of the other stuff I'm working on. Um, that's a Santa head. Uh, here's an eagle, a couple of small eagles. Hang on just a second. There we go. There's the eagles I was working on earlier with a friend of mine. With a with a flag wrapped around it. Oh, thank you, Harold. I, hi, Lynn. Um, the, uh, the pocket knives are rough rider knives, and I grind them down to my liking. Uh, they're usually a little bit different. I have several different ones that I like. Like for a while, and then I keep switching it. Um, okay, I'll look into that, Robert. I will take a look at that and see if I can find the butts knife uh, from Woodcraft. See what's going on with that. Um, hang on just a second here. All right. Any other questions, folks? It's fine. Uh, sharpening, I use my own sharpening method. I'll show that to you maybe Thursday night. If we get done with the painting, I'll, I'll show you some of the sharpening techniques in the second half of the hour, um, if you're interested in that. Oh my goodness, I got a wood chip in my drink. Well, that won't kill me. But the Murphy knives are really... I really like them for beginners. I was using flex cut, but I thought the blade was too thick for uh, for flex cut because it wouldn't cut through the wood as easily. But um, but these are really fun to do. They're not they're not hard to do. They're just fun to do. And um, I hope you enjoyed this 
this hour. Of, um, and if you have further questions, I'll be on for another couple minutes yet. Uh, this went a lot quicker than I thought. And, uh, you know, if you have any other questions about paints or tools, uh, let me know. I, I purchased them from a local guy that used to, um, used to get them. Um, he's got a carving shop in Lancaster, and he does all the sharpening and stuff for me, so they're ready to go. Um, you know, so I, I get it from him, but he says his supplier is not sending the right type of stuff anymore so I'm, I'm trying to figure out another place I can get them at a decent price that I can sell them to other people uh, if they're interested because really when I do a beginner's class this is exactly what we use is the Murphy knife the glove and all that thank you Verna take care all right Harold thank you very much for joining us today if you found this enjoyable let me know um Please, on Monday when we paint this, please send me a photo of it. I'd love to see how you carved it, if it was, how much different. Because everybody has a different technique on how to carve these. And then maybe down the road, we'll do the face. Okay? Um, I hope that uh, this will definitely be a little bit longer <laughs> than an hour. I was really rushing through this so you would be able to see it. And uh, you can always watch the video again. Okay, folks? I, uh, I'm going to sign off here. And you're welcome. And thanks for joining me. It was well worth my time to have fun with you guys today. I hope it was worth your time. All right. Take care. See you, oh, see you Monday at 7. Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Same place. Same channel. Same time. Um but on Monday. Okay, bye guys.